Soon after Lydie's return, the mansion was once again on the market. The Carmelite Order had sold the mansion to the Sisters of St. Felix in 1948. After 27 years, the sisters announced that they were moving to New Mexico and were asking $1.4 million for the mansion. One of the prospective buyers wasn't interested in the mansion, only the land. I think it would have uh, become a, a housing development, a subdivision or whatever, because there was an offer on the table as I understand it. But the community stepped forward. Citizens were asked to approve a two-year, one-cent sales tax to buy the mansion, preserving it and the grounds for future generations. Conoco offered to pay half of the purchase price if the community would pay the other half. There was a lot of interest, but the interest came statewide. They had free tours, and they had a lot of people come from Tulsa one time, and they'd be lined up, you know, take three hours to get them through the mansion. In a rare public expression, Lighty wrote an open letter endorsing the purchase. I do believe that for the city to own it is the best answer for ensuring the protection for the future of a structure that is unique, a place of rare beauty. On September 16, 1975, voters approved the purchase. A community-wide effort restored its original grandeur. Lighty lived out her life quietly next to the mansion, taking pleasure in her memories. And uh, she called me one day and had me come out. She said, I want to tell you something, but I don't want you to ever repeat it until after I'm gone. E.W. told me that he loved me more than anything in this world. Lighty Roberts Marlin died on July 25th, 1987. A handful of people attended her memorial service. In a front page story, the Ponca City News wrote, Lighty is gone, but the mystique lingers on. A few years after her death, Lighty returned in an unexpected way. Before the mansion had been completed, Marlin commissioned his favorite sculptor, Joe Davidson, to create statues of himself, George, and Lighty. Before she left Ponca City in 1953, Lighty was determined to destroy this last reminder of her earlier life. She hired a local monument maker, Glenn Gilchrist, to break up her statue and bury the pieces. Lighty remained long enough to see him smash the face of the statue. This to me was a passion, an angry passion, because it was so shattered, and in particularly the face. After Lighty left, Gilchrist couldn't bring himself to destroy the entire statue. Instead, he buried the remaining fragments on his property where it lay hidden for 37 years. In 1990, a letter from the Gilchrist family revealed the secret. I, I believe I was at my desk and they called and said, we're gonna go look for the statue again. And I said, well, call me if you find something because I'd been on a couple of wild goose chases with them. And so I went on about my business, came back and I had a phone message that just said, we found something. So. I went out to the site. Basically, the face was chopped up, and then the arm or whatever, but the most exciting moment was when they brought the lower part up and you could see the big hat that you see on her statue here, and we knew, yes, this is Lighty's statue. The timing was extraordinary. In a few weeks, the site was to be paved over for a parking lot. Craftsmen painstakingly reassembled hundreds of fragments. The restored statue of Lighty now graces the entry hall of the mansion. The statues of George and E.W. escaped destruction, but they were abandoned and forgotten. George's statue was uncovered intact in Ponca City. It was uh, laying down and it was just piled in the dirt and the hay was just piled over it in lumps like. And they got it up then, 
and brought it over to the mansion. George now stands next to his sister in the mansion. Remembering E.W.'s leading role in the growth of Ponca City, city leaders moved his statue to a more public place near City Hall where he could overlook the community he helped create. 